Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Moors and Blues. Good morning. Yes, I haven't taken a day off yet, but uh, I will. But I just wanted to get this out of the way because it's driving me crazy. There's a lot of things that drive me crazy, actually. So, uh, just to summarize, got 11 of these from a deal I made a couple of years ago. Sold uh, 10 of them. It's my last one. Doesn't have an electric start. It always had magneto issues because you would try to pull start and pull start and it wouldn't work. Uh, I bought a new one, new magneto. It came, took it apart. Realized that once I took it apart, it wasn't the same magneto. So I put the old one back and it worked. I don't know why. Maybe it's the switch after all that, but I'm going to test the magneto today. Uh, I bought a new one. It came. I think this is exactly the one that I need. Okay, it was like $14 on eBay. So uh, we'll take that apart in a minute. I'm going to finally get this thing going, whether it's the switch or the magneto. We are going to find out today if it kills me. Because I need this thing running and working so I can either sell it or use it. One of those. But right now, it doesn't do anything but take up space in my backyard. I'm going to do an early mailbag today because I just want to know what the hell this is. I can't wait till the end of the video to do a mailbag. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. And uh, upcoming soon, I'm going to be doing some more Wi-Fi smart camera reviews. Apparently, I'm on this international list called a KOL list. A KOL list. It stands for Known Opinion Leader. I don't know who put me on that list, but because of I, my name is on that list or my channel is on the list, right? I get these uh, Chinese product manufacturing companies contacting me about sending me their products. Mostly it's surveillance security cameras. I don't know why, okay? Anyway. Ooh, okay. So on my recent live stream on Mix Mowers, right, we had Musty One on board. And uh, I didn't want to ask him about his uh, situation with the post that he made uh, on the community boards about some political thing, which it was a long thread, it wasn't pretty, whatever. But uh, I have a feeling he was hacked because it was taken down a, a couple of days later, right? But the damage had already been done. So I was thinking to myself, well, I don't think I'm going to get hacked because I'm not a big YouTuber, you know what I mean? Yet. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I thought, what if somebody hacked into my account, right? They could theoretically just erase all 1,100 videos that I've made since I started the channel, right? It's a lot of work, you know what I mean, that I put into it that would be completely lost forever, and it would be the end of the YouTube channel, you know? So I thought about backing up my all my videos. Every video I ever made that's on the channel, I could back it up. So I was talking to my friend uh, Robert Nighthawk, right, over at Nighthawk's Mowers, or Nighthawk's Garage. He keeps changing his name. I don't remember what it is. Anyway, uh, so he told me to go get an 8 terabyte external hard drive, which I got right here. This cost uh, is brand new. cost $125. I thought that was a pretty good deal for an 8 terabyte one. I've seen 4 terabyte ones for about the same price. So it's made by uh, Western Digital. And, uh, you know, you know about Western Digital. Most of the hard drives are made by Western Digital, you know? So anyway, uh, I'm going to unbox this on an episode coming soon and install it and teach you how to um, back up all your YouTube files. If you guys YouTube and you have a lot of stuff that you want to back up, right, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, I have to first teach myself how to do it. I believe it's through Google Takedown. There's a takedown part of Google where it will just, because Google owns YouTube, and you could just press a couple buttons and the entire, all of your videos can be archived and downloaded into a uh, external hard drive. So even if I did get hacked, right, I could just restart the channel again and upload all the videos again, which would take a year, but better than not, better than losing all your videos. You know what I mean? So anyway, let's get to this fix. So here we go. I'm just going to try it. I mean, it might be the ignition switch too, but I have a feeling it's the ground or it's just the magneto itself. It's on choke. I'm gonna prime it a little bit. Yeah, 
just don't think it's getting any spark, you know what I mean? Because it has good compression, you can feel it. Now this is the Artec. It's a Briggs and Stratton engine, believe it or not. Um, this is a seven horsepower, 24 wide with power propel. When I say power propel, you engage the handle to engage the auger, the auger will go. But if you want it to help propel yourself, you pull it even more and it goes down some more. Rubber paddles, three paddles, not two, three, propel you forward a little bit. Okay, that's how it's power propelled. Also, what people don't know is, while it looks like your run of the mill single stage Toro, this is much bigger. When you put it next to something, you'll see. Also, this has four wheels. You may not, nobody knows this, except if you had a Snow Commander before. It has uh, fixed front caster wheels on it. So it has four wheels and knobby pneumatic tires instead of just plastic or solid rubber, you know? So it has never, it never has any signs of starting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this panel off, right? And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna disconnect the kill wire from the ignition switch. So that way we can see and uh, isolate whether or not it's the magneto or is it the ignition switch. The magneto process is a pain. To take out the magneto out of here, you gotta basically take this entire cover off, this panel off, this entire chute and handle assembly, right? Then you get inside and the gas tank assembly is in the way of the engine cover recoil starter to be taken out. So you have to take out the gas tank too and the entire assembly with the brackets just to get access to the bolts, the four bolts that take the recoil starter cover off. So it's it's almost a complete disassembly of the snowblower just to get to the magneto. It's a pain in the butt. Because this process takes a long time and I already have two videos of the detailed disassembly of this machine to get to the magneto, I'm just gonna go on time lapse and get it done fast. I'm just gonna take this cover off right now so I can disconnect the wire to the, uh, to the key, the ignition key switch. If it starts from that, we know it's probably not the magneto and it's probably just a switch that we need. So this comes off like that, but look, just to get access to it, might have to try to stick my hand in here. Take the gas cap off because it prevents you from flexing this cover. So I'm flexing the cover a little, I'm bending this out a little bit and I'm just gonna disconnect. There you go. The switch is disconnected from the ignition switch. So there's no switch. It should just start if it's not the magneto. Because there's nothing that stops it. Not even any signs. It's probably the magneto. I'm gonna put this on time lapse and show you the entire process of me taking it apart and getting to the magneto where we're gonna test the magneto.
Okay, as you guys saw, it was a lot just to get this cover off. I've loosened the two 3 8 bolts that hold the magneto onto the uh, engine block, the posts to the engine block. And the 3 8 You need half inch, um, 7 16 9 16 you need them all. You need the entire gamut of the stuff to get this going. So I'm going to teach you how to test this magneto right now. So I learned this trick recently from my friend Mick over at Mix Mowers. Go check him out on YouTube. This video was probably three years old, but nevertheless, I found it very helpful. So you just take a simple multimeter, right? You put it on continuity, 20,000, 20 K. You take the red cable, uh, red prong, stick it in here, do a little bit of a scratch, as he would say. And then you'll touch the black one onto this contact, that contact, and this contact. If it's over 2.5, it's a good magneto. If it's under 2.5, it's a bad ma magneto, okay? You guys can see the... I'm going to make sure you see that. Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. All right, here we go. So we're going to touch this, see if it's over or under 2.5. It is at 1.15. 1.514. Let's try the other one. 1.14. And let's try the ground here. Get nothing on the ground. Not not the one. So it's consistently 1.14. Which means this is under 2.5, which means this magneto is Dunsky! That's right, this magneto is Dunsky. Let me get the new one out. Here's the new magneto. Let's first compare it because the last time I bought this magneto was the wrong one. Looks the same, doesn't it? Last time, the magneto I bought, this thing wasn't curved like that. It was just straight up. So I knew right away that the holes weren't gonna match. And I think the holes were much bigger. They weren't like an oval, it was a clear circle. These, these as you can see, it's an oval. And this looks like exactly the same one. Uh, also, this part here, as you can see, this, this part here protrudes upwards. The one that I got before was just flush. <laughs> so I knew right away when I looked at it, I go, this isn't gonna work. But it looks like I got the right one. This looks this looks like it would fit. Doesn't that look identical? It looks identical. Identical. You guys knew I was dying to use that clip. I haven't used it in a while. So let's test this one before we put it on, okay? Got the red one in the boot. And we'll touch this part. There we go. 3.3. So as long as it's over 2.5, it's good. I would have expected it to be over six because the ones that Nick tested was over six. 3.2, which means it's good. Let's test the other one. Okay. 3.5. Gotta really hold it for the contact, you know? So 3.4, I saw that. So let's try this kill part here. Huh, that that kind of concerns me that I don't feel anything there on the kill switch part. I don't think my hand's supposed to touch it, that's all. Yeah, so I don't get anything on that one. I don't know what's up with that, you know? Three point three. So, this should be a good magneto, considering it's new. You know what I mean? Anyway, so that's how you test to see if a magneto is good or not. Two point five or higher, it's a good magneto. Anything lower than two point five, it's dusty. So I'm gonna put a 
I'm going to put a business card here to do the air gap. This part here has to be as close to this magnet as possible without touching. You just put a business card here and tighten it up and it should be good to go. And now I'll reverse uh, assemble everything back again on time lapse and then we'll give it a whirl. on wrong put this on anyway I need to put a couple two screws in here but uh, I put it all back together again as you saw through time lapse uh, I had a couple of neighbors that came down here asking me about snowblowers how to fix it and stuff so I had to talk to them for a little bit about how to put on the carburetor gasket and all that stuff and believe it or not they said oh yeah we've seen your videos I'm like really awesome uh, anyway, so uh, connected everything and you saw during time lapse. I tried it without putting this stuff on yet fired right up Fired right up Fired right up
after a couple of magnetos, we finally got her going. So I'm just moving all my stuff, my snow blowers. I don't, I don't see, foresee any snow coming anytime soon. So gotta clear that garage so I can work on other projects. I got no room. I'm gonna put these three. They all work great now. As you know, that big storm that came, all the uh, heavy snow just collapsed my little tent here. I'm just gonna take it apart and throw it away. And I'm gonna save the uh, tarp and cover these up. So that's it. Cleaned up my backyard, used the Sawzall that I had from Snapfresh. Actually, it works pretty good. Uh, cut my tent frame in pieces and just threw it on the garbage. I'm hoping that I don't have any more stuff that I'm going to need another tent to put stuff, you know? But uh, changed the Magneto today on that Toro Snow Commander. Now it's ready to sell or use, whatever. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.